tomorrow. Yer! Yer! <laughs> ah, now we mustn't forget the core tenets of being a pirate. Remember loyalty to your fellow comrades. Yer! Yer! Remember all the doubloons in the world are meant for the ship. Yer! 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 And you there, what say you? Yes, uh, inappropriate incestuous vibes from your uncles. That's piracy, right? Yar! You're Yar! right, brother! I... No, that can't... can't that, that don't, that, I don't see that written here. No, sir. No, Yar. no. Back on track. Back on track. Ah, yes. And uh, rem remember to, to, to always swab the deck first thing in the morning. Yar! Yar! Remem remember to remember that a monkey is a pirate's best friend. Yar! 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 Uh, oh, Yar! And what say you? Yeah, yeah. Remember to always carry around your father's scalp to look for treasure. Yar, yar. Darby, where you be getting these tennis? This isn't adding up. All right, we're getting nope, back. It's out of love. Still, Darby, don't want to be hearing from you. All right. No, no, lads, lads. We must, we must, we must, we must focus, 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 lads. Yes, remember that the, that the high seas are only are, are no stronger than the pa than the pain and the fire in your heart. Arr, arr. Arr. Now, someone, someone better top that. Right. Oh, I, I do. Yes. Uh, back to your pint about the monkeys having awkward sexual chemistry with the monkeys. Yar, it's all about the sex, brother. Yar, no. feed me an apple. No, no, there's not, there's, there's, there's no sexual innuendo with the monkey or anybody, or e even if it's your awkward co-star. Nothing. Nar, nar, and no, no, no awkward ke sexual chemistry. No awkward sexual innuendo. None of that. No, no, uh, no, lads. We must keep our eyes on the booty. Yar, <laughs> yar, booty. He's, he's a booty. <laughs> yar, ah, I, yar. I quit. You know when I pick a movie, that's when I'm under pressure. Now the question always comes back to me: What were they thinking now? You be listening to a podcast, you landlubber. Yard, 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 yard. No, I'm not going to do that. This is a podcast you're listening to, uh, you landlubbers. <laughs> and this is a. Uh, it's called What Were They Thinking? Um, I am uh, Brendan, and I am joined by um, the uh, the parrot to my pirate, but unfortunately he doesn't have an R in his name. But he is. But he. But he's great. He's great. Nathan's here. Yar. <laughs> That's all he's got, guys. Uh, good night. What were they thinking? <laughs> My name is Gigi. My name is Gigi. <laughs> <sighs> oh, we are. Uh, we are. We are here to tell this is gonna get. It's gonna get old very quickly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we are here to uh, talk about a pirate movie, a very special pirate movie, Nathan. Because on this podcast, I should note before we even get started that we uh, we talk about bad to questionable movies mm -hmm. and uh, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Um, we are talking about our, I think fifth or sixth i think it's sixth rennie harlan movie rennie harlan Har harlan harlan <laughs> on this podcast and that is of course the one of the biggest box office bombs of all time <laughs> cutthroat island um and joining us is another pirate on board well i'm calling him up from the poop deck ladies and gentlemen reoccurring guest galen howard yar 
<laughs> also yar and yar. Yar. Hello, yar friends. jar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um I, yar, I, yar, I, I I'm I'm quite in the I'm I'm quite in the mood. Uh, I, I, we, we, I have the benefit now of um, getting to listen to the the theme recorded live, not to get give away how the sausage is made. But I'm really in the mood now. Yeah. You, well, they performed live for us. They did. Ta- yes. Taylor yeah. did. Yeah. It was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. It was. It was great. Their uh, their chemistry was. Uh, you know. That was. Yeah, they they had a they had a sexual chemistry that was uh, unparalleled. I mean, it was it was Taylor by himself. So are you saying he had sexual chemistry with himself? Of course. Uh, oh, okay. you know what? Absolutely. If you don't, I mean, <laughs> well, you know, if you don't have it with at least yourself. You're pretty doomed. I mean, I'm just gonna. That's... You know, he was uh, he was clutching that instrument pretty tight. If you know what I mean. <laughs> that's why I can never jerk off is because I don't have good sexual chemistry with myself. <laughs> right. You know, I, I yeah, find myself know. rather repulsing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, get your hand off me. <laughs> you? No you? means no me. <laughs> what That's about it. This? Time's no! up. No. <laughs> oh man, Galen, you you suggested this one, I believe. I think I did. Yes, I and think this is my fault. We actually we we should have known that this wasn't going to be you know wasn't going to be something that we were going to look forward to because I mean it's a pirate movie, but it's not <laughs> rated R. 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 Nope, not rated R. It's rated PG thirteen. Thirteen. <laughs> um, doesn't have the same bite to it. <laughs> not quite. Not quite. You know, for strong like pirate action. <laughs> that is well, the yeah, literal, I... by the way, MPAA rating. Rated PG thirteen for strong pirate action. <laughs> yeah, that's um. That sounds like how you yeah. describe the the Pirates of the Caribbean porn parody. Yeah. Yeah. It could be. I th- <laughs> I think you can. I think you can be arrested for 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 strong pirate action in some states. So, yeah. Galen, why cut? Why? 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 Why did why I do this to you? Why, why did I do this to you? Um, this is a this is just a this is a fascinating movie. I think you know. I think any of the. I think there's like a list of like the you know the the major the, the major fiascos of uh, of Hollywood history. This is way up there, and I yeah. um. I think this, yeah, this one is just, I mean, watching it, it's, it's not, it, I mean, spoiler alert, it's, it's not, it's not a, it's not up with like, you know, a te- with the terrible box office bombs. This is by no means like a, um, a, a Battlefield Earth or even a Gili. This is like, it's not even, you know, a, it's not a North. No, it's definitely not a North. Thank goodness it's not a North. I mean, I would say like, you know, there are a lot of box office bombs that are, rather misaligned i would consider like you know ishtar hudson hawk and i would say this is like somewhere below that but i mean still like this isn't a this is by no means a terrible movie but it is definitely we there are definitely some issues and that i'm sure i have no doubt we'll get into um but it's i think it's a it is a fascinating failure because there is there is so much going on in this movie i think uh there's there there are some questionable performances but there are also some very good performances and there's this is this is certainly not a this was not a dull movie i you know this uh, i was i was certainly engaged i was confused uh, but i was engaged um so so yeah i that will get into it all right and and nathan are you like me having seen this for the first time yeah actually i i came i came this close to seeing it when i was in university uh it was like a I don't know when it was part of your curriculum. It was, no, it was a movie night in the res <laughs> or something like that. And uh, uh, I was going to go check it out. And then uh, one of my friends was like, you, you want to go do some shrooms? I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, so. don't, d- you know, don't take the brown acid and don't watch cutthroat Island. <laughs> I, I was, I was saved from watching cutthroat Island because my friend had shrooms. There you go. <laughs> well, there we go. So, so, the basic plot of this movie. Plot. We have Gina Davis playing a pirate. Uh, what 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 is her name? Uh, Morgan. Uh, Morgan I don't Adams. Her first... Morgan Adams. Morgan yes. Adams. Okay. She is. She, she is becomes a... a captain, making her Captain Morgan. Morgan. Exactly. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, it was a great oh boy. moment. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, but, that, but yeah. she. 
she is she's a pirate morgan adams uh she's a wanted fugitive of course because she's a pirate um she's going around uh her father is killed by this evil guy played by frank langella who we'll talk about a lot um and it turns out that he had a a part of a map to find some treasure and we're going to get into the details we'll just say he has part of a map to get to some (laughs) treasure frank langella has the other part and a creepy uncle has the third part and basically the movie is her trying to find the treasure while dealing with a very flirty and very dashing matthew modine Mm -hmm. uh as sexual chemistry lights up the screen and how uh, dashing is he though i mean really so dashing Box office gold, this Matthew Modine. Uh, you know, basically- I mean, I, you know, I, I mean, he was, he, you know, he, he was, you know, he was the, he was like the second sexiest uh, part of uh, Full Metal Jacket next to D'Onofrio. So, oh, they're going to say Arlie uh, Irving. Uh, that's what I figured he was going to say. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or Steve James. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it was Joe Morton. It was Joe Morton. Steve James is an American Ninja. Get it right, Nathan. <laughs> very different. Bo- both canon p- films, of course, but just very <laughs> different. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's just basically... Also, her- this movie, a canon film. Uh, <laughs> As in there are all kinds a- of canons in this film. This... Uh, <laughs> Zing! This had, this had the... This had, like, the aesthetic of... It, the mentality and aesthetic of a canon film, but with more money. It's actually... This, it's funny you say that, because it's a Carol Co. production... Oh, Which, R.I.P. By the way, as soon as this movie was released, yeah. Well, thanks. here's the thing: they 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 limped on maybe a couple of years afterwards. They should have been R.I.P. after Brandon Lee was R.I.P. Uh, because that was the same company. Yeah, right. this but this this movie, if you'll pardon the pun, sunk Carol Co. Pictures. Uh, pardon, essentially. <laughs> pardon the pun. Uh, <laughs> that and all of the rampant video piracy of the 90s <laughs> yeah um Just because settle this, in folks settle this, in it's this is what it's going to be like for the whole show pretty and, much, and if you're pretty wondering much. why i haven't finished uh wrapping up the plot oh, okay so they pirate around there's pirate stuff so anyway what i was saying is uh carol co picture okay so this movie I just want to get this out of the way right now. This is a huge budget movie. This is a $98 million budget movie in 1995. That is huge. And it made worldwide $10 million. And not only that, this is just the production budget. Apparently, this movie cost Carol Co. Studios $147 million. Oh wow! I didn't even know it was that much. I thought it was like ninety million. That's insane. We're talking about the that's same like, studio and, that made Terminator Two: Judgment Day. Yeah, and that's from like thirty, and that's like, and that's one hundred forty-seven, and that's one hundred forty-seven million like thirty years ago. Exactly. That's nineteen ninety-five no. money. That's also yeah. like I just want to point out that another. We'll get into the movie in a second, but another reason <laughs> why this is like such a uh, one of the reasons why it's such a financial failure is because they had such a hard time casting a leading man because Rennie Harlan basically said, "Oh, my wife Gina Davis, my wife is going to be <laughs> my uh, wife is going to be the star," and no like male, no huge male star is agreeing to be in it because I'm just telling them straight up, "You're going to be overshadowed. You're the you're the second person. You're you're like Gina is the star." And so they kind of had to go with Matthew Modine. No offense to Matthew Modine, but not exactly a box office uh, success. I can imagine yeah. Rennie getting ready to, you know, make this movie, trying to figure out who he's going to cast if he hadn't already thought of it. Then he thinks of Gina and he's like, my darling, let me make you a pirate. <laughs> Why is he Italian? <laughs> that was my French. That was my, that was my France French accent. Isn't he? Isn't he's, he German? He's like German is or he? Polish yeah. or something. Yeah. Oh. Okay, well here, well let me let me re- I'll I'll read Hello, I'm Bernie Harlan. This. Gina, I will make you a pirate. <laughs> my Liebchen! I am expressing my love in the only way Germans do by screaming and pointing. Now march to the set. Go. <laughs> Much better. Pull, pull the string. Pull the string. Pull the string. <laughs> pull the string. <laughs> So let's get started on the movie. Okay. <laughs> so it opens at the Carol Crow Pictures logo. R.I.P. Um, <laughs> we mean, start off. R.I.P. R.I.P. Rest in peace, laddie. Um, we start off. We see Gina Davis right away. She just finished boning some dude in 1668. 
Uh, I believe it's in Jamaica. 1669. I'm just saying. Uh, wow. It, it, I'm actually surprised with the amount of t- terrible sex jokes in this movie that they didn't just say 1669. And then if this was made in like li- like in the last five years, they just had like a little winky face at the end of the title card. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but she just finished boning some dude and he, and it's all set up though. He tells her like, ha ha, the government is going to come have you arrested. I set you up. But then she's like, I knew you were going to do that. And I took your bullets. So I set you up. No, I took, no, I took your ball, took your balls. Yeah. yeah. I took your balls. Cause you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sex joke and it's funny. It, it actually it's yeah. Because he didn't have anything. He didn't lead in his musket. You see, no yeah. matter how you say and it, it, it's it the his balls. Though. As soon as he said that, Patty was like, I- I'm sold. Let's watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> what follows go. is she likes her. What she likes, yeah. <laughs> what follows <laughs> is her escaping and a lot of action shots of horses and a pirate ship and about 15 hours of opening credits. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we meet the evil pirate named hilariously Dog. And yes, it's spelled D A W G, as in what up, dog? As in what up, and dog? Yeah. I know he wasn't a thing at this time as far as like, you know, a reality show or anything, but I think it would have been just uh, if Gina Davis's, hunter? if, yeah, if, if Gina Davis's boat had been the bounty. Oh, <laughs> so that he would legitimately be Doug the Bounty Hunter. It would have been perfect. Frank Langella worked. should be in a Doug the Bounty Hunter movie. Let's make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> as, so Frank, yeah. he's already been as, detective. As, as, so. as Papa Dog, or yeah, <laughs> all of them. Yeah, Skeletor Dog, Grandpa Dog, yeah, Detective Skeletor. Captain yeah. Detective Skeletor. D- dog Detective from Food Fight. Yeah, all of them. Uh, <laughs> so so he's an evil pirate, Frank Langella, and he uh, just devours the scenery, but in the best possible way. I think he is amazing in this it's, movie. I mean, that's it's a Rennie Harlan film. If you don't have at least a person chewing on scenery, but giving every bit of themselves to that, what do you got? You got you just got some schmucky movie. It's it's not a Rennie Harlan film unless there's at least one character who's uh, subsisting exclusively on set pieces. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And he add off those set pieces. Right. <laughs> we meet him um, as he's threatening to uh, to kill some guy. We don't know who he is yet, but we soon find out it's uh, it's Morgan's father, Gina Davis's father, and he's clearly uh, dog is clearly looking for you know his part of the treasure map, and he says you can't have it. It's in me head, and you're like, oh, he's he's thinking about it. Nope, just wait. So uh, instead well, of uh, on his head. It's on his it's on his mind, he says, I think. Um, okay. But instead of le- instead of letting dog just like, you know, kill him, he takes the plunge himself. And uh, and hilariously, uh, Gina Davis tries to save him. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm making a statement death, essentially. <laughs> and then dog shoots right. him and he fucking and he well, yeah. fucking goes underwater. Because, you know, you know why? Because he wants to be a martyr. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> this, this is gonna be our most deleted episode. <laughs> <laughs> they they didn't have that stat on Spotify before, and they just made it for this. <laughs> Pretty much. Yep. <laughs> it was like, nope, nope, not dealing with these chuckle fucks for two hours. <laughs> God, fifteen minutes, and they've already said it. You could, you guys could have a drinking game, though. It could be fun. <laughs> you want to yeah. kill our audience, do you? Well, I mean, so we'll, dead. we'll see what happens. So dead. You, yeah. You know what? Yeah. You know what, guys? The strong ones, the worthy ones, will survive. <laughs> so yeah. And you have to. So you to have all to the, do the uh, yes. game with Captain Morgan. Yeah. So to all the audience who isn't dead, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> and you, you truly are the chosen ones. <laughs> right. <laughs> the prophecy has revealed itself. Anyway. <laughs> Um, uh, Morgan, so her dad's not quite dead because he tells her, um, uh, before I die, shave my head. And I wrote down, what? Yeah, I was like, this is a pretty about? ego moment here. Yeah. It's like, okay. What are you saying? Kind of weird shaving your dad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> give me one last trim before I go. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. Yeah. And give me that tramp stamp I always wanted. <laughs> I can just imagine you, Bradley, Bradley Cooper from Star is Born saying that. Like, just give me one, one last shave. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh. Did you notice yeah. there were four writers? Oh, I just want to take another movie? look at you. <laughs> I think that weren't there like two title cards of writers? There were, yeah, because there was four writers for the story and two for the screenplay. Yeah, that's always a good uh, a good idea. Good I sign, think. eh? Yeah, yeah. And I think one of um, I know one of the writers was is also credited with Shakespeare in Love, which is um, a genuinely good movie, by the way. Um, yes. A movie that has been often uh, said, "Oh, that movie that beat Saving Private Ryan," but like honestly, it's pretty good, pretty funny. Not a bad. I mean, not a bad movie. No, by yeah. no means. A very, and, very yeah, different it's a, movie. It's a very different movie. I would say, yeah, probably, probably a better movie than this one. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't want to, um, yeah. Sli- slightly, slightly. Yeah, just slightly. a little bit. A little bit. Uh, I mean, Ben Affleck in that movie is better than anyone in this movie. I'll just say that right now. And he's got a Phoenix tattoo, so, you know. Even Maury Chaykin? Maury Chaykin was great. <laughs> Maury Chaykin is great. I, yeah. Yeah, right? See, Galen knows yeah. what I'm talking about. He knows. Fuck yeah. yeah. Get Maury Chaykin out your fucking mouth and let's continue with this podcast. <laughs> All right. So G-R-A Morgan just swears. told him that with her toxic femininity. Yeah. <laughs> Morgan <laughs> swears bloody revenge. Uh, but Harry, uh, you know, her father, Harry, makes her promise to uh, leave dog alone, leave him alone, dog, and find yeah. your uncle and take the crew of the Morning Star, which is another word for the devil, by the way. Um, yep, he's the man now. It's dog. also a guiding star as well. Yeah. Uh, cut to a fancy dance at a ball. Um, we see a man named Trotter who doesn't want to dance with this chick because he says she's too homely. Okay. The audio on this, I kept thinking the guy was calling himself Chaucer. Like Chaucer? Oh. Like Chaucer, yeah. Hmm. Like, was... like, like the family from the ref. Oh. <laughs> 18th okay. century French Huguenot. Yeah. Um, Never coming soon. That movie is flawless. <laughs> so yeah, he, sa- he says he says the girl's looking homely and and the and the other guy kind of becomes my hero because he's like you're not you're no spring chicken yourself, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, and uh, uh, yeah, so he's like oh and you are not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, you are you are something to behold essentially. Yeah. Cuz he does uh, have that that dude does have a horse face. <laughs> the that girl dead, is whisked we- away. By yeah. a smooth talking Matthew Modine playing William Shaw, who says, I'm a medical man. I know everything about the human body, all the biology, huh? Sex. We're talking about sex, lady. We've and this where you kind of find out that that she's been that she's been kissed by she's been whisked by a smooth criminal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 So so yes, yeah, so charm- you know what? I I go away for a while. I come back. I got nothing but shit puns for you guys. I hope you're enjoying this. <laughs> you're you're welcome. Yeah, um, yeah. So he so he charms the uh, the poor woman's uh, Kirsten Shaw, but does not charm her pants off. Which <laughs> no. I mean, her dress off, her bodice, or whatever. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure she's wearing like some sort of like leggings or something. Hmm. 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 Yeah, so so William Shaw we get is like a, we see right away as like a ladies man. He's very charming and everything, and he's stealing her shit as they're dancing. Yep. Um, but then all of a sudden Trotter is like, "Wait a second, you're no medical man. You're a you're a con artist." And all and suddenly all the ladies are like, "Where's my purse? Where's my jewels? Where's my hat?" And and yeah. he gets caught and enslaved. Yeah. And her and enslaved, like a, a, yeah. A jewel, a diamond encrusted. Oh, boy. It was it was something ridiculous, almost like a, a diamond encrusted nose picker or something like that. It was it was a weird item to be to have been bejeweled. Yeah. Wait, you, well, you think also, a nose picker is a weird item to be bejeweled? I do. Yeah. I mean, really. I mean, okay. Well, it's also I mean, weird it's that gonna, he is. It's gonna fuck with the yeah. clarity. Well, it was also weird that the guy the guy tries to. The, the guy tries to own him and was and is like like tries to trick him like oh are you on this ship and he's like goes, goes well may you know he's like well I think so but I'm not sure and he goes well that doesn't set sail until next week but but he didn't but he didn't commit to he it didn't he was commit. like he didn't commit to it he's like well maybe but I'm not sure and he's like aha <laughs> but he does like when the guy says aha he does go uh oh like essentially right. he goes erp m- m- merp zoinks yeah. And then, like the running away sound from Scooby Doo. Do 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 do. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it did my head. So, well, yeah. And it, yeah, anyway, they much. they say they say, okay, we caught you. You're our slave now. 
Cut to mm-hmm. uh, Gina Davis getting drunk. At this point, too, I just want to put this out there. I'd Listen. like to cut to Gina Davis getting drunk. I'm sure she, <laughs> yeah, she, looks, yeah. I'm, she I'm seems like she'd be fun to have a drink or two with. I'm just, I'm just yeah. gonna say this though. I love Gina Davis. Love Beetlejuice. Love Thelma and Louise. Love all that love, stuff. Love, love the love fly. Long kiss good night. Long kiss good night. But I, I'm gonna say this right now. Out of all love for Gina Davis, I think she is not good in this movie. Really, no. I don't think she's good in this movie. I think, you think she's it's a situation where she's not good, or it's just you, there's nothing you could do with the uh, garbage she was handed. Don't know because like her delivery is not convincing. I don't think. Okay. I, I don't think know. there's something. I think there's something off. And I'm not so saying she's how like would you terrible. how would you compare her as a pirate versus Leslie Jones in Our Flag Is Death as a pirate. Well, I mean, I'm sure the the joke in that one is that it's it is supposed to be miscast. But <laughs> I've never seen it, but I'm sure it's okay. funny. But I I just I don't know. There was something like it, it just felt like she was almost like holding back or something. I don't know. It was weird. Yeah, I mean, maybe Rennie didn't want her to be too sexy because <laughs> right, it's his wife. don't be too sexy. You're mine and only mine. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well, I mean, I think a lot a lot of it is. Um... Yeah, a lot of I mean, a lot of it is definitely the the chemistry with her and and Modine, and which is I, not there, not at all, very lacking. Yeah, not at all. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's I think where she suffers the most. Actually, I, if you want to you want to talk about poor performances in this movie, I just I did not care for Matthew Modine's work in this movie at it, it's, all. It's kind of a nothing. He was very mis he was very miscast in this part. Eighth grade math teacher striking <laughs> it out in acting. That's 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 what it came across as like there was ugh. well yeah he has no charm it was um um i also i also love that he's um he's trying in the in the first scene he is he's trying to be the he's supposedly you know the, the you know in disguise trying to um um you know trying try, trying to pickpocket all of these ladies and the whole time is just D- dancing with all of these flourishes, drawing so much attention to himself, which is the opposite of what you want to do when you're trying to pickpocket people. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I, I, I just feel like it was might have been a situation where every time he tried to turn on any sort of sensuality or smoldering, Rennie was there to just shut it down. <laughs> I, I feel like that had a not big... this my wife. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that had a big part to do with it. I mean, I think that's that's why. Um. I mean, I think that's. I feel like that's why Long Kiss Goodnight worked because she really didn't have a romantic lead in that movie. Yeah, no, she hit, she hit on Sam Jackson, and that's about it. That's a, her that's and about David it. Morse's character were were long finished before, and and he wasn't even really a sexual a partner because we find out that you know what? Let's just talk about Long Kiss Goodnight. I love that movie. It's, it's, it's already it's did. So you guys can listen to the episode. It's already been recorded. So back to the movie. <laughs> Um, so Morgan is getting drunk, uh, and, and grieving about her father. And we meet, uh, great character actor, Stan Shaw doing this crazy Jamaican accent as glass pool. <laughs> um, then okay, Morgan, that, the- that's the weirdest thing. Like he, he, his name is glass pool. And if you look at the way it's spelled, it's also, I think it's the British spelling with an E on the end of it. It's not inconceivable for him to have a British accent at that point in time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because England had been a country for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years before then. I'm sure people of color had ended up, I mean, obviously probably as indentured servants or slaves in England at that time, but it's not inconceivable for a guy like him to have a British accent. Why would you make him put on this terrible Jamaican accent? Go ahead and make him put on a terrible British accent. Come on. <laughs> also, what was really funny, there's also one of. One of the other um, one of the other members of their ensemble is uh, a, a a guy named Bowen, and she and um, uh, Christopher Gina Katie da- Masterson. Uh, G- Gina Davis keeps saying Mister Bowen, and it always sounded to me like she was saying Mister Bond. <laughs> <laughs> Mister Bond, yeah, yeah, Mister Bond, Francis from Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah, ba- <laughs> baby, baby Scientology himself. <laughs> oh boy! Yeah. Was he a Scientologist? I thought it was just Dan. I thought it was just Danny Masterson. The, that the, all those siblings, the Danny, him, Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah, okay. he was a. Oh, oh, so that's a Masterson. That's one of the Mastersons. That's yep. a Masterson kid. Yeah. Okay. Not the worst Masterson, but nope. he's nope. a Masterson. Yeah. Not by far. <laughs> 
Um, so anyway, Morgan, uh, with the big reveal here is that she fucking scalped her father because mm-hmm. the treasure map, his section of the treasure map is, is on his scalp. So not mm-hmm. only did she have to go through the trauma of her, like father dying in front of her, she then had to take a knife and fucking cut off the top of his head. Let's not forget about the, the whole weird thing about shaving your dad. Well, I think that's what, I mean, I think shave my head so you can see the map. It well, might yeah, be exactly, overshadowed exactly. by the scalping, but only by a little, I think. Well, I think it would have been greater if he said, if he didn't, if he said, just shave my head, but she didn't scalp him. And so she was just dragging around her dad's dead body for the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> so like, was it till death do us part that yeah. Morgan or uh, Megan Fox movie? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Till death, I think. Yeah. Till death. Be, that's it, a, yeah. You know, um, it'd be great if he was like, I want you to take me scalp. And me bollocks. <laughs> In a jar. Like, Yar? Yar. <laughs> Father, this is disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> my psychology bill- bills are going to be through the roof. The roof. <laughs> I. You know what? Given the some of the things that her uncles say to her in this movie... I, I, I feel that her psychology... Your psychology bills would already be through the roof. Kind of lines up, yeah. Or above the yard arm, as they say. (laughs) So she has the scalp map, uh, but it's written in Latin, so they need they need to find a translator. So that's my uh, death metal band name. Yeah, Yeah, I I saw um, scalp. I I saw (laughs) yeah, I saw scalp map open for Iron Maiden. You know. They're great. Uh, so then you get a translator. So they go and visit. Uh, they they go and find out that Shaw, like Matthew Modine, is is in a prison. And, you know, he's he's a slave now, and that he speaks Latin. So, um, and, and to to show her that he can speak Latin, he says uh, something, and then he says, loosely translated, "You're a very beautiful woman. I'd like to wash your feet." And that line is treated as if it's supposed to be like a playful sexual line. And I'm like, uh, no, it's not. <laughs> no, not Did- at all. Did Quentin Tarantino have a ghostwriting credit on this? <laughs> oh boy. Um, d- yeah. So is he saying that he's Jesus? <laughs> I don't know. No, I think he's just got a foot fetish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Either well, way. You know, I mean, right. So he's Jesus. <laughs> I just oh thought boy. it was weird <laughs> it, that, that he was like, I'm going to wash your feet. Anyway, it's, it's, it's a it's weird. weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, well, and and then um, getting back, you know, a, a touching on another another example of clunky dialogue, which is there. There are plenty of those in this film. Um, Just the yeah, whole movie, dude. The whole movie. <laughs> and then she and then she retorts with, "Well, if you want to watch something, wash your mouth." Kaboom! Bam! Like she <laughs> mic drops him. Lights. <laughs> mic drop. Yeah, yeah, it's it's so bad. So uh, they bring Shaw to a slave auction, and they're having they're having bids on. I was very disturbed by this idea of a slave auction with like a, a white Matthew Modine being being auctioned off. I was like, he was a criminal. Hey, he's a criminal. No, man. I know, but it was just like, why are we he's really war to the state? Yeah, do we have to bring like the idea of slavery into the stupid pirate movie? But they anyway. were they were in Amen. Jamaica in the 1600s. Yes, they needed to talk about slavery because that was a thing that's the whole triangle was not any kind of real way it's just a white dude getting auctioned off he auctioned off at a slave auction there you go anyway i think it's a bit more weight than this movie deserves so i think it's a bit more accuracy than i was expecting uh, so uh (laughs) they're 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 auctioning them off and uh uh, she's uh, Gina Davis is you know kind of going back and forth with this older guy who's bidding, and then he says, you know, you know, if you if you're just doing it for pleasure, you can have me for free. And she responds by stabbing yeah. him slowly in the side, which and, is what yeah. you do. Yeah, yeah. And eventually I mean, wins. It, she wins the bid. Yeah, uh, yeah. And and they yeah. And it's disturbing because the guy looks like Alan Rickman, whose like face is melting. <laughs> I do have to ask you guys though. Um, have you have either of you ever been to an auction, like an actual like you know, like an actual like uh, oh yeah, yeah. Have you been to like an Abba Baba auction? I can't say I've been to an Abba Baba auction. I've been to silent auctions before. Okay, I think it's the Beast or something. Yeah, yeah. So regular auctions where people not an Abba one though. Regular auctions is what I meant. Yeah, um, yeah. but my, my question is, okay, so you're going back and forth. You go back and forth. You say your bid. The other person says their bid. The other person says their bid. And eventually people stop bidding because they don't want it anymore. And that per- whoever gets the highest one wins. Right. Correct. Can right. we can yes. we establish that? I don't yes. think you can just say, 
40 pounds to end the bidding. And then they go, okay, you won. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I, don't I don't think, think that's it how works it works. That way. No, I don't think it works that way. Well, yeah, because then they would, you know, even, well, yeah, well, they, they narrowed it down because then like that guy is, you know, that guy like walks away and the guy is like, well, come back. Don't walk away. It's like, that doesn't, that's not how it works. It's like, <laughs> then it was just someone else would, 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 would throw down the bidding be like, you know, oh, yeah. uh, 40, you know, yeah. but you can't say 40 pounds and the bid is over and I win. Well, okay. And, and I win. Yeah. Mic <laughs> drop. Wash your mouth. Wash your mouth. So they, she, Morgan wins, uh, Shaw, and then all of a sudden, someone, someone recognizes Morgan as uh, a fugitive pirate, and there is like a twenty-five minute chase scene on horseback, and there's lots of fighting and kicking and punching and one-liners, and I did enjoy the double-decker getaway portion of this chase, where they like Matthew Modine because they steal, they steal like the head. Uh, the, the he's a the governor of Jamaica, the British guy who's Trotter's boss. They they steal his Ainsley. carriage. Hainsley is that his name? Uh, I think his name is Ainsley. Ainsley, Ainsley. okay. Ainsley, gotcha. And so <laughs> zing. Yeah, t- take Boink. that fake British d- governor of Jamaica. Uh, so. <laughs> All right. They at one point during this getaway, uh, Matthew Modine, who is uh, driving the carriage, uh, he goes through like this archway. But Gina Davis ends up like jumping up off of the carriage and she's like running through this shop that's on the second floor, keeping pace with a horse drawn carriage. And then she manages to jump out the other side and land back down onto the uh, carriage. Completely ridiculous, but it's really fun to watch. And then very woodenly says, I must visit that shop again when I have more time. <laughs> As a human would do. Mm-hmm. It's the, the lines are so, the, it, the delivery is bad in like a lot of the scenes, but in this scene, especially like Matthew Modine at one point just says, I am not fond of heights. Like that's how he says it. I'm just like, fuck, breathe some life into this thing. <laughs> Well, yeah, no, it all comes off as just exposition. It's just like, there's no, like, no subtext just whatsoever. It's all just like, Text. this is what but I'm thinking can, right can, now. You can deliver that line so it sounds a bit more natural. You just have to or put nuance, some of course. fear in your, in your voice, some nuance to it. Instead of just like, oh, I'm not fond of heights. You can be like, oh, I am not too and fond of heights. That, and I think you touch on a, like a, a major issue with this film is that there are for the for the leads there really there are no you never get a sense of there being any really high stakes or risk there's always it's like in both the characters there's always this idea of like of like the like their inner monologue even as things get really heightened as as things get as as the the tension heightens th- throughout the film there's always this like there's always the subtext just feels like ah, i got this there's yeah. no like think of like oh fuck there's it's always like Ah, well, okay, now, 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 I'll just I'll deal with this shit. Okay, what's that? Ne- what's next? You know, it's kind of like the problem I have with a lot of, uh, and this is not a, a a slight on him as an actor or you know as a funny guy or whatever, but it's kind of the problem I have with a lot of Ryan Reynolds non Deadpool movies is that he's 100%. constantly, constantly just being like, oh, this is silly. Yeah, it's no problem. I got this. Like, there's there's no danger here. It's like, okay, well, I got to be in somewhat worried for you. <laughs> like, and that's the that's and that's the risk you run with a Ryan Reynolds movie is like a lot of directors now, I think when they get him, if they get him into a movie, they're like, look, let's let him vamp for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, OK. Also, during this this scene, this this getaway scene, why did they encounter the uh, emaciated Cardinals funeral? Was I was that a thing where they just marched people openly desiccated bodies through the street? I mean, I I mean that seems historically accurate. I but I don't know. I well, I, I, I mean, wasn't Gale, there. So. Galen Galen does have the you know masters in history, so I'll yield. Yeah, well, well, uh, pirate history specifically, just yeah. pirate history. Yeah, pirate history, and uh, yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. The, the, this scene goes on for a long time. And uh, I, at one point I said, oh, great. Morgan's just going to call Shaw slave this whole movie. But luckily that doesn't last forever. <laughs> um, at one point she says, 
I'm going to show you something. And like it we cuts to like him looking right at her crotch. Yes. And then she brings out her dad's scalp. And I'm like, wow, what? Like you couldn't go any more opposite. Like he thought he was going to see her vagina and he saw her dad's scalp. Yeah. And he, he brags like, oh, well, I've seen one of those before. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is filthy. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Just, and just um, wait. yeah. And then she <laughs> and then she brings out her she brings out her father's scalp and he like looks at it like, oh, no, no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Show me scalps all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, actually, yeah. no, he doesn't because he doesn't know that it's a scalp at first. He does ask her, is this like pig's flesh? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. But yeah, there is. Yeah. They. Yeah. The thing. With, yeah. The thing with it with the scalp thing is that they don't. They never have anyone being like, oh, that's weird. You know, there's everyone's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're the, the map on the scalp. Cool. Yeah, I was put off by that the whole movie. Was, she's it's carrying weird... around a piece of her piece of a scalp. Um, she could have just like copied that over onto a parchment pe- a p- piece of parchment. No, nothing. Anyway, carved it into a, into a, a barrel head as one of yeah. her uncles did. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we should note that at this point too, there's a character we mentioned. Maury Chaikin is in this movie. Plays a character named John. He's an author. At some point during this whole chase, he was pulled aside by one of the uh, by Ainsley and told that basically, like, if you know where Morgan is, let us know because if we know that you know and you don't tell us, you're gonna get to. And if we catch you, you're gonna get executed just as if you were a pirate. So yeah, if I know that you know that we don't. I don't know, and you know, and I know, but I know that you know, but I don't know that you know that I don't know. Am I okay? God damn Who's it. on third? What's on second? <laughs> no. Base. Who is the name of the man on fourth? That's what I'm saying. Brendan's never played baseball. It's a different <laughs> baseball, guys. Respect <laughs> other countries. Anyway. Uh, is it basketball? <laughs> no, it's Boolia baseball as played by Elf, the lovable character from the <laughs> titular sitcom. Yep, that's Excellent. exactly what I meant. Uh, yeah, um, we're, yeah. just, man, we're just going to yep. veer off and talk about Elf. No, we're not. Yep. So they plant God. the seeds. Oh, yeah. yeah. They planted, Mac. The seed, they planted the seeds for John to, uh, I, mean, I mean, anybody who's watched a movie is like, okay, he's going to turn on her at some point. So I've watched the uh, movie. <laughs> have you seen a movie before? I've seen a movie before. I, I've seen this one at least. Oh, okay. Just this one for your first yep. movie? My first, oh, it was cool. my first one. Movies are kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know. Based on, they're not like based real on this life. Being my first movie. Yeah. Oh, no, not, not like real life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know. I know, man. I know plenty of people who carry around their father's scalps, but you know that's the only comparison. Imagine if, like, someone sh- showed you the idea of a movie, and they showed you a Neil Breen movie, and said every movie is like this. I would be on board. <laughs> I, I'm taking up reading. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah. Here I come, TV. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. did you see this new movie? No, because if it's like anything like that first movie that I saw. Yeah. Yeah. Well. So- no, Reading wouldn't be the same because I would expect all ellipses to have four dots. <laughs> right. So anyway, Look, the- if Schindler's List is anything like Fateful Finding, and I'm steering clear, <laughs> steering clear. Avengers Endgame, I fell for that when I watched uh, uh, I am here. Double Down. Dot, 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 <laughs> now. <laughs> okay, so the crew arrive in the town called Spittlefield uh, to find the second part of the sure. map. Great name, by the way. There's, there's three parts of the treasure map. <laughs> yes, it's and, originally called uh, Loogie Field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Mordecai has the, has the second part. But, of course, the guards won't let them get close, so not Big weird. Dairy to- farmers in Loogie Field. <laughs> <laughs> So not weird at all is that Morgan poses as a prostitute to get close to her uncle, as you do. And yeah. I love I love his reaction when she walks in essentially is, wait a minute, you're not a whore. <laughs> <laughs> you're I had a, pretty much. Yeah. If I had a quarter for every time I said that. I know, the, right? Yeah. I always get Right, yeah. Up. And I think the introduction is something like, this is a whore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ah. Hold on a second. You're not a whore. <laughs> wait a wait. second here. We're not a whore. <laughs> yikes! Yeah, that's a there's a whole lot of yikes. Yeah. So Mordecai um, is is reluctant to give up his part of the map, but he finally agrees when she shows him uh, her dad's bloody scalp map, and then uh, something about like you know th- that was the that was the British water. iteration was uh, uh was bloody scalp map. There was scalp <laughs> map in the, in the United States, and then the British band was uh, when they were in Britain originally. They were bloody scalp map. Bloody scalp. Bloody scalp map. Yeah. And then they yeah, and then and when they when they 
when they went over to the United States, they were just they were just scout map. I don't know why he was so hesitant to give his portion of the map. If somebody produces a bloody scalp, uh, you know, it doesn't even have to have a map on it. I'll be like, you know, what? shit, here's the map, dude. Just get GTFO. Like, no. Send in the horror that I ordered. I like how you're still adamant about the horror that you ordered. I well, know, yeah, you midst... paid good money for that horror. <laughs> well, no, but in the midst, in the midst of all your fear, of this person right. carrying a bloody I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm. I'm trying to keep the fear hidden. I'm just trying to like deflate the situation, de-escalate yeah. a bit, if you will. You know, right. and that's like you can have the map. I mean, you need another portion altogether. And even if they, if like I said, if there's no map on there, they've just shown me a bloody scalp. So I'm like, look, here's the map. You need like three other parts. Take it. Right. Just go in here's good health. Yeah. Please just send in the whore. I have a to catch. Oh. Send oh. in the whores. Yeah. Right. Those laffy daffy whores. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. So they're already here. That's what pirate whores I'm guessing sound like. Oh, okay. So cool. anyways. Hey, man. Um... I gotta get some of those. Based on that. Anyways. Yeah. So movie. Um, no, wait, he we finally, keep, we, we finally keep trying, agrees, Galen, we keep trying. Mordecai yeah. finally agrees to, uh, he finally agrees to help her. But just like that, right at that moment, dog shows up with his crew and threatens to kill Morgan with an eel that he pulls out of a barrel. Um, eels like don't do. hiss, by the way. Uh, these ones do because they're, cat no, they eels. don't. Eels don't hiss. No, no. The, the, the only, ones in the movie do is what I'm saying. The only eels that have any sort of auditory ability are the shrieking eels from the princess bride. Uh, I think they were catfish eels. I gotta work on my Wallace Shawn impression. <laughs> yeah, you might need it at parties. <laughs> you need you need to do it for uh, so you can get gigs on Cameo, pretending to be Wallace Shawn. Because I think I hear he gets a lot of requests <laughs> for oh, the young, for the teenagers. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Wallace that... Shawn and Doug Benson. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, what about that Doug Benson guy? Uh, apparently, I I can I can pass myself off as him. And I know you. I know you smoke weed, uh, Nathan. But I'm just gonna say Chill. this: you. I know you smoke weed, but I'm gonna say you still need to get a lot higher if you're gonna be Doug Benson. <laughs> Challenge accepted. All right. So, um, uh, so dog shows up. Like I said, he and then the he big accidentally. Bad dog? Well, God damn it! We need to get through this movie. <laughs> Bounty hunter. Dog shows up and he accidentally kills Mordecai because his own guy like pushes him in once he has like a sword up to him. God. And hilariously, Frank Langella is like, hey, you killed my brother. And he kills the dude, <laughs> slices his throat open. Fun bit. Um, yeah. yeah. Again, Frank Langella killing it. Um, dog shoots Morgan and she kind of winces a little bit, but ultimately treats it like she just got a bug bite. Like she doesn't really sell it that much. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Eh. Eh. That's my that's my Gina Davis impression. I think it's pretty oh, good. I like eh. it. Yeah, I remember that part in Thelma and Louise. Eh. When they, is yeah. that when they go when over I, the cliff? When they go over the cliff, it's like yeah, you hear. <laughs> eh. If you, if you turn actually, up the volume I, at the end, you'll hear. Eh. I yeah. guess I missed the nuance. I was going to compliment him on his spot on impression of Gina Davis in the movie Angie. <laughs> mm. Yeah, absolutely it, yeah it really it really kills the moment for me and Thelma and Louise hearing her do that though right at the end I thought they kind of ruined that special moment <laughs> yeah yeah they hold hands that, that, the music swells and then you hear <laughs> to be fair that, was, to be fair, uh, fair. that, uh, that might have been uh, that might have been Harvey Keitel going <laughs> <laughs> I was a little disappointed during this whole fracas getaway scene when they cut down the chandelier that the chandelier didn't encompass anybody like to trap them it does blow the fuck up though and True. i was gonna say it made up for it immediately by making shit explode <laughs> like everything explodes this goes into the this apparently they were serving gunpowder for dinner that night <laughs> <laughs> well there is one gunpowder explosion but then apparently gunpowder is also everywhere else just, mm -hmm. Yeah, you just sprinkle it everywhere, you know. It's, it's, just, it's yeah. trace amounts of gunpowder everywhere. That's how things were back mm -hmm. in uh, 1668. Well, yeah, um, it was, it was so, a form of seasoning, you know. It's just like everywhere, yeah. So Dog does That's manage how you get to get bang, bang, shrimp. So Dog oh, does man. manage to get the map. 
He does manage to get the map for Mordecai. Um, it, while this is all going on, there's like slow motion action scenes where they're clearly not talking, but the but the editor just like plopping these fucking ADR jokes in nonstop. Mm-hmm. Um, they then they figure out though that the numbers on the scalp map are the longitude. So the they Psalms escape. because that there's when he read it, they found out we did we didn't cover that that when they found out what was on the scalp. It was actually done in a mirror print, so it was all backwards, and they were all psalms from the Bible. Yeah. And then they, she was like, "What are the? What's the 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 numbers? The psalm numbers from the the you know scalp map?" And uh, she he says he's like, "They're longitude and latitude." Or yeah. So um, they figure that out. Uh, Morgan tries to cure her, uh, bullet wound by splashing alcohol onto it, but somehow, somehow that doesn't work and she nearly passes out. Um, and then, uh, a Shaw has to play doctor with her, but then we find out he's actually later on, we find out he's not a real doctor. Spoiler alert. Um, but we get a lot of like sexual, like, Ooh, I'm going to pull this out of you. Oh, I'm very delicate with my hands. That kind of thing. He d- mm. he does also make her give him a kiss, which is kind of weird because he's looming over her <laughs> doing surgery. Um, right. you're, and you're, after your she surgeons ki- don't do that to you, uh, well, I pay extra mm-hmm. to have them not do it. Mm. You have to pay; it's a tax. They say, I, "Listen, I my my mo- li- my last surgeon was rather attractive, so I didn't mind." Well, they say, "Listen, you you if you don't pay the tax, we're we're gonna we're super gonna kiss you while you're under." Like we're just gonna mm. do it. It's happening. And you know what? I mean, he he was easy on the eyes. I'm not not gonna lie. <laughs> so. Yeah, Matthew Modine was my surgeon too. No, 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 not him. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I didn't mean that either. Oh, <clears throat> uh, football. So uh, <laughs> she kisses him because she says, "Okay, if I kiss you, you got to tell me where you got that because I know you took the map from Dog at the last second. I know you have it." And he's like, "Okay, okay." Uh, uh, yeah, totally. I'll tell. I'll tell you. And then she kisses him, and he's like, "I don't have it." Yay! Or yeah. sorry, he goes, "I don't have it." <laughs> Whatever the fuck that noise was, you made his his MacGruber sound. Yeah. Oh no, I'm talking about the Gina Davis. The impression. Gina Davis. Oh impression, right, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't have it. <laughs> so. Yeah, she did do the um. She she did she a uh, little known fact. She did do the sex sounds in MacGruber. That's actually. Oh, Gina that makes da- sense. That's actually Gina Davis. <laughs> you, have to, you have to watch through most of the credits to yeah. to get that that sound credit for her. Exactly. Yeah, she de- she demanded a credit. Normally, that would yeah, go it's, uncredited. It's not in her. It's it's not in her acting filmography. Actually, if you go to IMDb and look under her acting filmography, it's not there. But if you look under sound department. McGruber. McGruber sex sounds. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I heard I heard that she wanted to be credited as Frank Welker, actually. <laughs> <laughs> or, or Wally Wingert. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Not just sex sounds, additional sex sounds. They, 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 had, they, had a, they had Welker to do the main sex sound. That's why she didn't get to be credited as Frank Welker, because right. he did the main sex sounds and she did additional sex sounds. Yeah. yeah. She did the I'm, New Hampshire sex sounds. Right. I am surprised he Welker ones. isn't Welker isn't hurt in this film. He would he was he would he have been, probably is. He, yeah, I, he would I have been great I, for the monkey. Yeah, I think I actually think he does have a credit for this film. He probably for does voices. for the legitimately for the monkey. I think for the parrot too. Um. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> uh, so the the kiss happens and then he's like, now. and then he's like, psych, psych. I don't I don't have the map. Um, also, if he was an accurate doctor to this time period, he would like do a chant and all the humor trolls would march out or something. Then that's not what he does. Right. But he does nope. get the he does get the ball out. He does get Wait the bullet a out. He would be a British doctor. You wouldn't be any chanting. He would slather her with leeches. Oh, well, whatever. And then he'd make her shit in a bucket and check it exactly. for trolls. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. And k- kill a sheep to check its guts to see what their future held. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so it. it they say Uncle Dog will have his day, which is hilarious. Uh, yeah, I left. <laughs> then the reveal. Then the reveal. By the way, that Shaw does have Mordecai's part of the map. Oh, he stole it at the last second. But then Morgan shows up and catches him, and she's feeling nice, so she makes him point out where Cutthroat Island is. Title of the movie, and then says mm. that you know what, we're just gonna maroon you uh, on an island somewhere rather than just murder you. So uh, because I'm feeling nice. We're going to slowly kill you rather than quickly kill you. Yeah, I yeah. mean, at least she's giving yeah, him a absolutely. fighting chance. 
a fighting chance while he's chained up by his arms and legs. No, 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 no. she didn't say anything about chains. She just said maroon him on a rock the size of this table. Uh, well, she didn't I say mean, that he was going to stay chained. Just a rock the size of this table. I think that's a fate worse than death. <laughs> uh, no, that's Gili. Uh, we go back to the subplot with John, uh, Maury Chaikin, the writer, uh, who was trying to, uh, they were trying to make sell out earlier when they were mm-hmm. on the other island. And he sends a message via carrier pigeon. How the fuck does this, how the fuck does this work? How the fuck does the pigeon get to the right spot? How does it go well, the, right to that guy? I'll actually, I'm more than glad to tell you that one. Okay. Uh, Brendan, I, I uh, call bullshit car- on all of it. <laughs> oh, you, you, certainly, you can try. Uh, the idea, I, from my understanding, the idea of the carrier pigeon is the, 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 the carrier pigeon um, with a fantastic sense of direction, uh, trained to know, where their home generally is and to fly back there. Just like the sparrows returning to from Capistrano every year. Uh, they have a sense of direction and they know where they need to go. And that's where they be. That's how it, uh, a home. Ask Mike Tyson. He loves pigeons. Uh, okay. Don't make fun of him because he'll punch you out. But this is not, but this is not like, Oh, this is clearly the pigeon that is native to that area. This is just a random pigeon. It's but not like no, he knows where my, that pigeon's going to go. Now, this does take a bit of a stretch because I believe Rennie should have shot at least 15 minutes worth of this scene, but I'm pretty sure that they belong uh, to Anusley. Uh, here's some, take, take some of my carrier pigeons uh, to be able to message me when you get more information. Yeah, because otherwise I was just like, this is stupid. Right, right. <laughs> mm-hmm. But he, he, he had to cut that scene uh, to leave in all the the smoldering chemistry scenes between Gina Davis and Matthew Modine. If you do it enough, they might believe it. Um, right. So they head straight into a vicious storm because Morgan is dead set on finding that treasure. And rightfully so, I want to say, a mutiny arises because she's leading them to certain death. And I mean, yeah, I'd be mm-hmm. kind of pissed off too. Yeah. Um, because of the, and they're literally like, it's, it's not like they come out and they're like, we've been planning this for months. They're basically like, we don't want to die. <laughs> Arr. Arr. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, he's kind of not wrong. Uh, so the mutineers load all our heroes, uh, except Shaw, who's still chained up into a long boat and lower them off the ship. Uh, Shaw though, breaks free of his chains and jumps off and follows, follows behind the long boat. Um, I think he may have been better off sticking with the mutiny. But uh, yeah, ju- just, just judging by Gina Davis's threats earlier, um, and then he follows them. Yeah, and then Absolutely. make it to wait for it, wait for it, Cutthroat Island, baby. Oh boy! Oh yeah, we gotta get there. I was waiting for this. Yeah. I was waiting for this moment. Whip, whip, you know, name the movie that, and then say bam, bam, the Yeah, the sequel <laughs> or the squeakquel. Oh, that yeah, the squeakquel. Yeah, there was a couple cool. there was a couple things towards the end of it where I was like, I think they're setting stuff possibly up, but not too firmly. Mm. It's yeah. not it's not it's not like a Mario Brothers thing where they're like, oh, we're definitely ready for the second one. Yeah. yeah. Bring it on, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Well, bring it on did have a sequel, Galen. Yeah, tr- that is true. That is that is that that is true. Bring it <laughs> on. They brought to it more than once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, yep. Yep. <laughs> Step up to cheer harder, yeah. Yeah, cheer harder. Yeah, bring it up to yeah, bring it onto the streets. Yeah, uh, and yeah. Isn't Modine? Uh, he he tries to run away, but then gets caught in quicksand. Yes. Yeah. It was Which a total. I, I, it was a total. Wanna... It was a total Princess Bride moment. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to bite too much on on Mulaney here, but I've never encountered quicksand ever in my life. No. No. Have Galen, it, huh? quicksand? Uh, could quicksand? No. <laughs> Just had to make sure, right? Okay. Well, yeah, no, it's racking my, racking my, my noggin. Yeah, but it it, it does make. But, me I mean, think I'm in California, it. you know, so you would think that you would have at least encountered it once or twice. Mm. I don't know. I mean, maybe you know. I I feel like that's more like a um. I don't, I don't know. I, feel, I I feel like that's in more and more like um. In more swampy, in more swampy climates, you yeah, know. Yeah, New Orleans type. Exactly. Situation. Yeah, Nolans. Yeah, in my time mm-hmm. at Nolans. Yeah. Do you? Do we, you? But you. But you've taken like a few dips into the like La Brea tar pits, though. Uh, yeah, I mean they they require it. You know they 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 require it. Wait, just if you're a citizen? 
Yes. If you no. want to be a citizen. Yeah, oh, no. Like, a, a, you know, when, when you, when you apply for residency in, um, in Los Angeles, they make you, they make you take a full dip naked in the, in the, in the pits. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. so anyway. And, and, um, and, uh, yeah. And Andy Dick is always there. Ah, yes. Okay. Yeah. Cause he's, he's like the, from my understanding, he is like the, I don't know what's the he he's like the grand marshal mm-hmm. of, of yeah. that ceremony. Like he's every the, time they have that the, ceremony, yeah. he's there. Yeah. He's been he yeah. has been deputized uh, by himself. Mm-hmm. Sure. I thought he was just like this ghost that actors see when they like reach the end of their careers or something. Um, well, no, you uh, and I mean a lot of people will see him will see him when they're on you know during acid trips, but that's usually because he's doing acid with them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they lo- so they're all very excited about finding Cutthroat Island. Uh, but I also noted that, oh, great, you'll be millionaires stuck on an island. Um, <laughs> but yeah, then hey, Dog, that's you know, my dream. Jeffrey Epstein was fine with it. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't <laughs> know that they have a bunch soon. of. Uh, <laughs> I don't know that they have a bunch of sex cabins. Yeah, uh, they're they're pirates. They yeah, have yeah. sex cabins. Yeah. Anyway, so dog. Yeah, yeah. is um yeah, and uh and Bill Clinton and Chris Tucker are on the island too. Oh God, do you understand the word? No, dog shows up <laughs> uh, after getting a tip off from uh, one of the mutiny guys, and he he basically says like it, it's great because he looks at the guy at Scully is the one who the leader of the mutineers, and he looks at him and dog says, "Thank you, but if you ever turn on me the way you turned on Morgan, I'm gonna eat you." <laughs> I will eat. I will resort to cannibalism. I won't just remove your your scalp with a map on it. I will actually eat you, devour you. I will devour you. I will at the very least sample your flesh. Yeah, at the very least, I will devour. I will eat. I will eat of thine flesh. Yeah, I will devour your brain and gain your knowledge. Mm -hmm. It'll be a nice charcuterie board. Yeah, uh, you know, with carrots and a nice you know pinot. But I I will. I, I I will consume your flesh. Don't you mean a charcuterie board? Charcuterie board. Oh, yar. it's been too long. Yeah, bring it back. Yeah. Bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Any other R words you guys want to do? Or <laughs> nar. I, okay. Nar. Nar. Yeah. Uh, so Shaw returns. Uh, okay, so there's a there's a bit of a bit of a bit of a throw off here. They try to get you. They try to get you with because Dog is sleeping and we see someone sneaking in and taking the map. And we think at first that it's Gina Davis because he sits up and says, "Bitch stole my map," which is the greatest line in the movie. <laughs> that was um, a good one. Yeah, but we find out it's Shaw. We find out it was Shaw, and then of course we get to the quicksand, the quicksand, the quicksand yeah. part. There's some quote unquote playful banter and teasing, where Gina Davis slowly watches him dying uh, before finally using the so like playful. most flimsy ass twig to like pull him out of the quicksand. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's a guy standing right next to her with lengths of rope around his shoulder. That blew my mind because I was waiting for her to be like, when she decides to save him, I was waiting for her to be like, all right, throw the rope. But she looks at the guy with the rope, then looks past him and is like, get him out of there. Enter a janky twig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, so they it, get yeah, him out of very there. Odd. And that's my DJ name, yeah. actually. Janky twig. Janky, janky twig. twig. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you and the, you and Skrillex are going on tour, I hear. Yeah, well, yeah, you know it. Yeah. How There's how so great? Much cocaine. How great would it have been if instead of like an actual janky twig, if he just like lowered, if she just lowered in Twiggy to like help him get out? Now, mm-hmm. do you mean the model or the robot from Buck Rogers? Yes. Okay, so the model as the robot from Buck Rogers. Sure. Absolutely. As the, that as is my model. dream. Beedy, 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 that beedy, is beedy. my dream right there. Yeah. Actually, I think his name is Twicky. Not, oh, but it's Twicky. Twicky. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so they're looking for the treasure. They discover. Oh, it, it it says that it's past this cliff. So let's check and see if there's a cave. Lo and behold, there's a cave. So Morgan and Shaw go into the cave where uh, two of their two of their people are out are at the top of the at top of the cliff to make sure that you know no one fucks with them. Uh, they find the treasure, which I was actually kind of blown away. I thought it was going to be like, they find it and there's just nothing there or there's something stupid, like most treasure movies. Right. Um, but they find it. And then of course, as soon as they find it, the bad guys are there and they run into them and it's very intense. And, uh, dog pushes Morgan off the cliff and Shaw catches her in the nick of time with one arm. His arm would be ripped off. Thank you. I actually have my note arms 
torn from sockets, both of them. Because he's yeah. on a rope. He's hanging literally by a rope. She falls, grabs her with one hand, and like the whole her whole weight should have either pulled him into the water or ripped his arm from a socket. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I mean th- that is that is definitely a trope of 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 so many action movies, and it's I mean it's a it's completely it's almost always implausible, but it's especially implausible here. I yeah. think we've actually we've yeah. actually used it in a couple of episodes before, where it's like his his arm would be torn hundred percent right out of the socket, a hundred percent. Yeah, it's it's a it's a he really romances that stone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> so, um, they actually do end up falling. It, it, they have the treasure on the rope, and they're going to lift it up. But they end up taking the plunge into the water, which I believe would also kill them from that height. Absolutely, uh, but they yes. s- they somehow survive. And John yes. is there, Maury Chaykin. He's just chilling on the beach, and he finds Shaw and says, "Oh yeah, I'll help you. Come with me. Come with me." Leads him right into where Dog is. Mm. And Dog has made an alliance with those soldiers from earlier. Uh no. Oh. Shaw is enraged that John sold them out via pigeon and punches him right in the gut. Oof. And 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 what a gut it is. <laughs> yeah, well, Maury, so you got to pay. Why, yeah, you know, he's got some grit to him. Game. That's why we that's yeah. yeah, that's that's why we love that's why we love the Maury. Man, how great would it have been if Maury Chaikin had hosted Maury instead of Maury Povich? I oh would have my won. god, that would have been that sweet. would have been great. Things would have been so much nicer. Yeah. It would it just, would just would have been, been really fun. yeah. It would have been pleasant. Yeah, yeah you know, Canadian you, topics with a little bit of humor sprinkled in. Yeah, but if, you know, if, if, it would have lasted a season. If it would have been paternity <laughs> tests, though, it would have been Maury Chaikin being like, "Listen, listen, listen to me. You're the father, but like, you know, you've you've treated him like a son. So why can't you both just?" Be, take care of them, and it's 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 Canada, so there's a lot of social programs in place for you to actually be in his life. You're right; it would have lasted one season. One yeah, season, there would have been no yeah. drama. Yeah, because it's all uh, it's all caring and helpful. It would have lasted one season. <laughs> security <laughs> guards are being security guards are being laid off because they have no fights to break up. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah that. That is an interesting question. Is the, because I don't know. Is there a is, is there much of a um like a talk show circuit in Canada? We had uh, Dini Petty for a while. Who's that? Who's that woman on CTV during the day? She has like that s- cooking slash Marilyn. Marilyn, yeah. on, yeah. But it, it it's actually the it's the Marilyn Dennis show. It, it's more on in par on par with like um. You know the the Ellen DeGeneres show. If she wasn't awful, mm. <laughs> um, we also have our view, our version. Not on camera, but just like not awful to her staff. Exactly, I mean. exactly. Yeah. If, if she, so, if she was Canadian, basically. Yeah, yeah. If polite. What I would also add is uh, the other one that's our version of like the talk or the view is we have the social. Yes, Ooh, that's. Yeah. I mean, that sounds that sounds kind of pleasant. It's. I mean, it's. It's certainly uh, more watchable. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. But only because there's there's an undercurrent of Canadian uh, passive aggressive politeness that exists within it. Oh, yeah. I, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be fun. So, um, so Morgan is still alive, though. Of course, she's our hero, and uh, but she manages to. Sneak I would love on it board. if she died halfway through. <laughs> you can still be alive in the bedroom. <laughs> it would it would be a first <laughs> yar. yar anyway um so morgan sneaks on board the ship and snaps someone's fucking neck and throws a knife at another one in the head i was like where was the fight where's this violence in the rest of the movie um you're just pulling she out freeze- the stops yeah yeah, she frees all her crewmates who are being held underneath in the ship, and they throw all the mutineers overboard. Um, but they try to make it seem like nothing's happened. But of course, Dog, he's a clever one. He sees them from the other boat, and he says, "Like, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna hang Shaw now, mm-hmm. because I bet you Morgan's gonna react, and she's gonna attack us. She's gonna blow her her, uh, her element of surprise, and there's gonna be a giant ship battle for about thirty seven minutes." And uh, that's what we get is the bunch of cannons blowing up uh, people being immolated. Uh, John is Maury Chaykin is fucking burned alive. Um, so many uh, people dying. 
in the most brutal uh, PG-13 ways that you can. Um, so sad. <laughs> Uh, dog and his and his crew board the other ship. We get a bunch of sword fights, and I I just love. I think it's so funny PG thirteen sword fights because you see them like like stabbing them, but there's like nothing there, and then they just kind of keel over. And I feel like I'm watching a movie from like the fifties. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, just, yeah. And just, now that um, and now that Maury's dead, there's no longer a whole lot of chicken going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all week oh boy <laughs> yeah Mom, shaking all over baby. paid to fart <laughs> paid to fart <laughs> uh this movie has a lot of swords to the, to the dick i just want to point out there's a there's more than one time when someone got hit with a sword to the dick um uh so morgan uh goes in uh, underneath a uh, dog's ship and goes to blow out the bottom of the ship she goes to blow out his bottom if you will mm. um Oh my god, we ran past one of the most uh, innuendo-filled lines oh. when she was trying to lead them into par- uh, into Cutthroat Island. Uh, because their ship is larger, he actually says, she wants us to tear our bottom up on the coral. Yeah, we're in for a blow. And I was like, oh my god, this movie is filthy oh yeah. yeah intentionally filthy too oh 100 percent. yeah and there, there there was the um um there was the bit when she gets him to show him the map and he goes like oh well so if i show you mine you'll show me yours yeah uh so she does uh manage to blow up the bottom of the ship uh trotter uh turns face for reasons i didn't really get i why think that he happened. was he was finally fed up with anusley yeah, I guess so. I it just wasn't like it just felt like I was like okay, like I whatever. Right. <laughs> so he uh he helps the good guys now. Um and then Morgan has her big sword fight with Dog that makes its way to the top of the mast. Uh he tells her uh you you've run out of world. <laughs> Did you happen to notice during all of this fracas during the the duel with him and her the fights with everybody else like uh, you know Trotter turning face all that. There's just some dude playing a fiddle. Well, you got to have music while you're having a mutiny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, it's like it, the it Titanic like, sinking, you know? Yeah, or <laughs> the, the guys who would play the fife and drum during the battles of the revolution of the Civil War. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's like, exactly like the Titanic. Like, uh, you know, I just expect the fiddle player was like, well, boys, you, shall we play? They're not going to listen to us. Well, they don't listen to us at dinner anyway. Onward. Well, the- they weren't blasting the Titanic apart with cannons, though. Uh, you didn't finish that movie, then. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't see the Tarantino version <laughs> of Titanic. Yeah, yeah. See, see, Inglorious Bastards. James Cameron was like, I wanted to go with like an alternate cut, uh, just in case people didn't buy into the history of the thing. So exactly. originally, I had the Titanic being blown apart by cannons uh, by 18th century pirates. Uh, Check it out and see if you think it works. Unfortunately, we couldn't get it past the MPAA. They kept rating it. Arr, <laughs> arr. Yeah, <laughs> I've used that joke twice in this episode. Yes. I should think that shows considerable restraint on my part. <laughs> um. So anyway, <laughs> cut through an island. We're right at the end, guys. They uh they have their final sword fight. Uh, she gets knocked down, but she gets up again. Uh, and never then, gonna keep her down. Uh, never. Yeah. never. Uh, she tries to get to uh, Shaw something. because. Uh, Shaw is underneath the ship and he's now covered up to, in, in water up to his neck. So she, uh, she saves him in the nick of time. Uh, dog is like taunting her. He's getting re- really close to her. And then she's God. like, Oh, but you didn't know that under this blanket, there's a cannon and she lights it and he gets a fucking cannon to the gut and flies out of the ship. And he's dead as fuck. Let's not forget the bon mot. Yes. Bad dog. I love you. Yeah. I wrote that down too. <laughs> Bad yeah. Dog. yeah yeah um, yeah and Morgan... it, yeah and it was it was de- it was delivered just like so half-heartedly just yeah that's what i mean that's what i mean about gina davis in this movie man yeah. i love gina davis but all of her dialogue is just like bad dog like it's just <laughs> it <sighs> It, I mean, it felt like she was it, it, in moments like that, especially it felt like, like she was just embarrassed to say the line. <laughs> Honey. Yes. The movie's great. Yes. I love it. Uh huh. Sure. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. It's great. Yeah, yes. Yes. You're packing a seven. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so Morgan uh, rescues Shaw. 
and they just they barely over escape. rotate on their dive as they get off the ship. Yes. <laughs> oh. Uh, they just barely they did. escaped. She almost did a backflop. <laughs> oh. It, it hurts. I'm just saying. I've done it before. It's painful. And when uh-huh. you see somebody do it, you're kind of like, ha ha, but also, ooh. They barely yeah. escape before the ship blows to hell. And mm-hmm. seemingly it's one of those endings where they're like, oh, we didn't get the we didn't get the treasure, but the real treasure was inside all of us all along. But nope, the treasure just pops up on the surface and they get all of the monies and all of the golds. And the uh, she, and, says, to, and she the says to her crew, yeah, she says to her crew, um, you know what? You can take your share and split or, you know, we can stay together as a unit and keep doing our thing. And they're like, we're a unit. Not yes. at first. They were having a laugh at first. They were. And they were like, I want. Yeah. You know, what does the guy say? Like, I want to do gardening or something or I don't know. Gardening. Yeah. Gardening. You want to be a farmer. A farmer. That's right. Yes. I want to do some farming. Yes. But they ultimately they want decide... to live to see the birthday past me 79th so that yes. I can greet people and say, I'm matey. <laughs> but they ultimately all stick together. Morgan and Shaw have their totally hot uh, kiss at the end. And, Get ready for uh, Cutthroat Island 2! Well, they do say they're heading to Madagascar. So is... Guys, I ha- I, it's been a while since I've seen the animated film Madagascar. Is that the sequel to Cutthroat Island? Because I'm that's where they sure. say they're I'm going. pretty sure it is. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Ben I mean, it's the... it's a long set in the distant future sequel, but it's still I think it I think it's part of the same thing. Cutthroat Island cinematic universe. Yeah, the, the, the 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 C T I M U. Yeah, C I M U. Yeah, uh, like C. I've been drinking. <laughs> uh, this yeah. I think cutthroat is one word in this, so it'd be a C I C U. Cutthroat Island Cinematic Universe. Kiku. Good job, Spavold. Kiku. 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 Um, yeah, so Madagascar, the sequel. Uh, can't wait. Um, mm-hmm. So, guys, we're, that's it. We did it. Cutthroat Island. I'm going around the horn. Galen. Galen, is this... Oh, uh, oh there's your notes. It got crumpled up. <laughs> Two points. Galen, yeah. is this movie worth a watch? A drunk watch with friends? Would you attempt head trauma to forget it or avoid, like, the plague? Well, as we've said, this isn't this isn't an outright terrible film. I wouldn't you know, do any irreparable harm to uh, to erase it from your memory. But um, it's not it's definitely not worth a watch. It's not it's not quite um, drunk watch with friends. It's because it's just it's just too bad and not fun, not quite fun enough. I feel like this is a kind of film that you watch like while like sick in bed, really high on cold medicine. Wow, um, so it's on the tuss, as the kids say. Would you would yeah. you say that it's somewhere between that those two categories? Then, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, okay, okay. Nathan, what about what's well, the you? Ga- Galen, I, I think I actually kind of got you. I got you covered on this, buddy. And I, this because I had some caveats to this too. I think this is a drunk watch with friends, with the caveat that you're able to obtain grog uh, to watch it with while you drink. Yeah, I, that I yeah. So I, that you can have yeah or mead. mead yeah, I was gonna grog. say mead. I was gonna say it's grog or mead. Mead yes. or grog. If you can have mead or grog, yeah. it's a drunk watch with friends. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, yeah. Yar. No, no pr- yeah, no pruno though. No, no, it's got it's grog or mead. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And may, may, maybe maybe some bandanas. Yeah, if you're yeah, make it make a cosplay night of it. Yeah. If you're in, you know, if you're in prison, maybe Pruno, but um, only if you're in prison. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're in prison, I mean, I think if they make prisoners watch this movie, that's it, it violates a Geneva <laughs> Convention, uh, I think. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is the welcome video for Guantanamo Bay. Um, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. That now now that having been said, what I just said, I'm actually I might surprise everyone here. I'm actually gonna go with worth a watch and i'll tell you why i i I, i'll show my work don't worry i still say that gina davis and especially matthew modine and some of the other people like a couple other people in the movie are not great the acting is not good overall aside from you know frank langella but 
I ha- it's weird. Like I know it wasn't good, and but for some reason, and I know the action scenes weren't particularly well done, but I like had fun watching it d- despite all that. And I it kind of more than a drunk watch level. I was actually a little bit invested. It weirdly, it was such a weird experience for me watching this movie, guys. I was like, wait, do I like this? <laughs> That's Rennie I mean, Harlan. What do, you, what do you think is like the most to recommend about this movie? I just had fun watching it. I don't know what yeah. to say. I it's it. It also it's long, but it, it honestly didn't feel like I made. We we joke about how the action scenes are very long, but it doesn't. It's never boring. I don't think. True. I I thought it was entertaining enough. So that's 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 what he does, man. Like that's what like he does. It, like on a like, like honest a to god, s- if if you tried to sell me on the adventures of Ford Fairlane just by describing it, <laughs> I'd be like, I don't know, man. That sounds like kind of a hard pass. But then. You show me the adventures of Ford Fairlane, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh yeah. Same with Nightmare on Elm Street Four. Long I keep Kiss forgetting Night. that he did that he did Ford Fairlane. Uh, I keep yeah. forgetting we, that that we, is a that is that is a Randy Harlan joint. Um, but yeah, no, I would say like if I was like if, if this was like a you know like people give movies like f- out of five or whatever, it's probably be like a solid three for me. Like honestly, it was just it was just you know it was it was fine. Where would you where would you guys rate this in the um uh, the the Rennie Harlan oeuvre? The RHCU? Mm-hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Out of all the ones we've seen on the show? I mean, about- I'd put it I'd put it below I'd put it below like Ford Fairlane and For enjoyment purposes, four, yeah. Yeah. But I would put it above Die Hard 2. Wow. Okay. I do not like Die Hard 2. Okay, I don't but if like- we're- if we're talking about the and now, I, I'm just gonna because he's made so many and there's so many I haven't. There's a few I haven't seen, right. but if we're just talking about ones we've done for the show, um, I would I would probably say Long Kiss Goodnight is the best one we've watched. Mm. I would maybe yeah, I put. Agree. I would maybe put. Um, this would fight it out with maybe a cliffhanger for me. Um, mm. uh, Nathan and I are very uh, of very different opinions about Ford Fairlane, so I won't even mention that. But I love Ford Fairlane. Yeah. No. It's a movie, um, but it would probably fight it out. With- <laughs> <laughs> You're an asshole. <laughs> I, I said it was a movie. <laughs> I, I'm I'm being nice. I'm not saying anything. Um, oh, <laughs> but yeah. So I know I it would probably fight for like second place. I think uh, of, of all the ones we've talked about on this podcast for me anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's the least the least of the Rennie Harlan's for the ones that we've done for the podcast. Less than Deep Blue Sea. Yeah, it's less than Deep Blue Sea, dude. Yeah, come on. Deepest, bluest, my head is like a shark fin. There's no way you dislike this more than Mind Hunters. Oh no, there's okay, sorry. It's the second least then. Okay, there, there we go. go. There you go. There <laughs> that, you go. Second least. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> love this a lot more than I liked Mind Hunters. A lot more. All right. Oof. Yeah. That yeah. shitty twist ending. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. So, and, and it's yeah, and it's um and I know you 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 guys haven't done the covenant yet, but it is better than that. I don't know. Yeah, it's better than that. <laughs> yeah. But 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 Harry Potter was a pussy uh coming soon. Is that is that oh, the yikes. Weatch? Yeah, that's the Weatch. Weatch. Movie, Weatch. I'll make you yeah. I'll make yeah. you my Weatch. Yeah. Oh, coming soon. Cuz we got to do all his movies eventually. <laughs> of course, it's Renny, man. Friend of the podcast, we'll have, we have to do all of his movies and then somehow secure him as an interview. Yeah, of course. After we watch twelve rounds, mm-hmm. uh, so okay, so we're gonna take a break, guys. We're gonna take a break. Uh, we're gonna hit, listen to some sponsors, some ads, and then we will be right back. What were they thinking? And. We're back. Yes, we have we have returned. We've returned, and it's now time, Nathan Galen. It's now time for the low haiku. <laughs> Nathan, Nathan, uh, what is a low haiku? Well, the um, low haiku is uh, is seventeen perfect syllables filled with lots of lip and tongue action. Uh, used to describe uh, the movie that we've been we've been talking about for uh, about an hour and a half or so. Galen, as our guest, would you like mm-hmm. to begin with your haiku? Absolutely. Make sure it's low. Yes. Low haiku. 
Yes, I'll check. Uh, I'll check my gain volume. Um, low haiku. Um, zing, zing. One father loses his scalp, so his daughter gains treasure. Go pirates. Oh, very good. Very good. Very good. Included the people of Pittsburgh mm-hmm. in that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. A, 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 nice, a, a, nice work. A relatable familial sacrifice of course mm-hmm. absolutely mm-hmm. uh nathan would you like to uh, da- uh, uh dazzle us with your haiku Abs- absolutely only absolutely. if it's a low haiku only if it's a low haiku. of course of course <clears throat> this was garbage yar so many innuendos where's alan tiddick Thank you, thank you, thank you, mm-hmm. Brandon. Please do do send us home. Mm. Uh, oh, get out of here! Uh, before before uh, this oh. this segment uh, brought to you by Smeckler's Powder. Smeckler's Powder. Sure, it's a little more expensive, but quality is worth it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Smeckler's Powder, and you get a twenty percent off uh, uh, ZenCaster coupon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. just advertising for our recording software now. Okay. pirate's life for me buckle in the swash dude that swash gina step on face very good very good i I feel that 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 last line actually explored a bit more of your kink but um Mm, 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 that's okay it's it's 2022 and there's no kink shaming you live your best life and we're out. <laughs> and so is Galen's heir. Gale fart is paid to fart. Indeed. Paid to Gale fart? Yeah, absolutely. Guys, we talked about Cutthroat Island at length. We've absolutely. discussed this movie. We've broken it down. But Nathan, what do we always say? Well, uh, we always say... Don't take a word for us. That's right. That's what we say. We say don't take our word for it. Nathan, what are the fucking critics saying? Well, um, those uneducated Philistines, because uh, it's raining hard, I'm <laughs> sticking up for them. But not it's my your boy. Numbers. That's the outlier. Uh, 39% uh, from the critics out of 41 reviews, this one says. Okay, so 39% out of 41 said A-OK or fine. Right. Mm-hmm. And what about the audience? Surely they are, that is a very different number. Ac- no, actually, uh, you would think uh, because of, you know, Gina Davis and all the other. Stan crew, Shaw, of course. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Glasspool and, uh, you know, Detective Skeletor and Joker <laughs> being in this movie. Uh, but no, only 40 percent from the audience out of 10,000 plus ratings. Damn. Yeah, but but I will say this, Brendan. Oh. If you like this, which I, I kind of did, okay. Well, you might also like uh, Simon Says, uh, uh, the Dennis Rodman movie coming soon. Mm. Uh, Iron Mask, but uh, not that one. <laughs> but not that one. No, not the Man in the Iron Mask. Iron Mask. Yeah, the Schwarzenegger Chan film. Not very good. Uh, Dragonheart, Battle for the Heartfire. So not even the original Dragonheart. Oh man, over the top. Coming Which, soon. Yeah, I mean that's oh, a pretty great movie. That's and an finally movie. uh Dungeons and Dragons. Which if you want mm. uh audio proof of that we don't like it, see our Dungeons and Dragons episode. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. So if I liked all those uh wow, I don't know if that's a great system done. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't seem like it's too spot on. Yeah. Maybe we should just uh we should just get started here. Um let's see. The critics. Let's look at these critics here, folks. Uh, yeah. okay. Let's start off with uh, Nick Rogers of the film Yap. Um, he's, it's mm. a fresh review and, and he says, it's hardly the landlubber suggested by its reputation, which has more likely shifted more toward novel curiosity than cautionary tale. But of all the parties involved suspected they were going broke, they should have gone for broke to boot, but it's still positive. Three and a half out of five. Uh, well, let's see here. Uh, who do I got? Uh, 
Deson Thompson uh, from the Washington Post wrote, it takes a two hour act of will to keep facing the screen during this moribund movie. I think someone got a word of the day calendar for Christmas. Hello. Yes. Well, um, um, R.I.P. Roger Ebert. Um, uh, oh, your boy, Brendan. My boy. Yeah, your boy. Um, um, concluded his review with this. Um, this is, in short, a satisfactory movie, but it doesn't transcend its genre, and it's not surprising or astonishing. I saw it because that was my job, and having seen it, I granted skill and awarded three stars on that basis. But unless you're really into pirate movies, it's not a necessary film. Sorry. <laughs> and that's a positive review. And that is a pos- that is a three star review. That is a com- that is a yeah. complimentary review. This next review is, I'm assuming, a pseudonym because it's Carol Kling, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, Gene Shalit. And uh, oh, the boy. review ah! the review reads the as critics such. corner. Yeah, tick tock. Yeah. This pirate movie wannabe should walk the plank. <laughs> Jesus. I I'm sure there there's got to be 3 reviews at least that say that that have that exact that exact sentence. Okay, well uh uh my next one uh comes from uh your country idol Chris Hicks. Hmm. Uh shout out to the maritime wrestling community. It's more like watching a couple of stars play let's dress up and be pirates rather than accepting them as characters in a swashbuckling adventure. There we go. Yeah. Chris Hicks with some stern words. Let's do let's, let's just get one more critics review. I think I think we're, we're good with the critics. Galen, give us one more. Yeah, this this just amuses me because it is, this is a, this is technically one of the the one of the official um, critics. And this comes from. Emmanuel Levy of EmmanuelLevy.com. And I um, wonder how he got that job. Right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he, well, he snagged that domain. So good on him. Um, and he, he says, poorly written, acted, and executed adventure tale of pirates. I was, I was hoping you were, you picked it because of the typo. <laughs> oh, I sure, I sure did. How could you not? Adventure. You want to go on an adventure? I get on it. Going on, yeah. I love going on adventure. I love going on those adventure tales of parrots. Um. Okay. So let's go into the audience reviews. Enough of those stuff. Enough of those stuffy jerks. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Don't know anything. Yeah. Same for the academy. Enough. Yeah. Enough of those stuffy adventures. (laughs) <laughs> Let's go into the audience adventures. Um, the first review here is from Barry B. I can only assume it's Barry Bostwick. And Yay. Um, he says, from, ha- from Megaforce. Megaforce, yeah. <laughs> he says, half a star. Utterly unwatchable. I took the extended family on an unbearably hot day, primarily for the air conditioning, and despite the heat, we walked out after 20 to 30 minutes. I had actually <laughs> met... Rennie Harlan and Gina Davis while working in LA and I like them. So walking out on their movie was a big deal. I truly could not figure out how they can make such a total bomb. There was none of the campy charm that at rare times gives a bad film, some redeeming so that it's good aura. It is simply put a terrible picture with zero value. I'm sorry. He walked out. Okay. He paid theater money. He didn't pay theater money for this movie. He paid theater money for air conditioning mm-hmm. and he walked out. Yeah. That's not some bullshit. I think that's what people did a lot in the back of the day. That's why it's movies that sucked made so much money because people just wanted the AC. Because <laughs> there's summer releases, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, my first one comes from uh, Philip S. And I can only assume it's uh, short for Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh, right. uh, R.I.P. 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 Uh, and, and he writes... Uh, if you have a couple of hours to spare, it'll help pass the time. But there are other pirate movies around. Three yep. out of stars. There are other pirate movies around. That's accurate. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. That yeah. is true. That is technically Galen, true. Galen, do you have an accurate review, review as well? I have to read this one um, for, um, from Jake C., who gives it two out of stars. And a um, little bit of misappropriation here and says, in quotes, That's going to be a no from me, dog. Frank Dog Lanchilla. <laughs> well misquoting there I, but yeah i i i just i feel like uh i feel like um uh that could also be a gene shallot review 
Cutthroat Island, that's going to be a no from me, dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Randy Jackson is like, why do they keep stealing the shits? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Sh- uh, Shiloh P gives it five stars and says, I have no idea why this movie gets so many bad reviews. Personally, I love this movie. Watch it yourself and make your own opinion about it. Do your own research on Facebook, guys. That's where you find the real news. Or on Elon Twitter. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, my next one is from Johnny G. I can only assume it's Johnny Gargano. Mm. Uh, and he writes terrible acting slash script combined with a seemingly hodgepodge story and a few laughs throw. Uncle Dog will have his day to us stars. <laughs> All right. Next review is from Tommaso Ciampa. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Um, I think you mean just Champa. Yeah. No, um, I don't know. All right. Well, uh, Sergey <laughs> L um, gives it um, gives it three out of stars. Very adventurous okay. story with Gina Davis, his first class filibuster. Quite good, which is worth the more recent series. That's a sentence. What the fuck does that mean? What? I have no idea. Oh, man. Um. Okay. Okay. This is from uh <laughs> this is from Roberto G. I can only assume is Roberto Ganini. Um oh he boy. gives it uh, he gives it half a star. When I watched a part of this thing, I saw cheesy effects and forced love, the worst thing ever. <laughs> Which one? Uh, yeah. uh, I hope cheesy effects of forced love are the worst thing. I ever. hope forced love is forced love a PC way to say like assault. <laughs> like, I, I mean, I guess yeah. It doesn't I sound mean, like like it doesn't sound forced like love. Fake. Yeah, unless he's talking about all the furtive glances Gina Davis took towards the camera. Oh, yeah, I mean, no, I guess not, I guess maybe yeah. I mean maybe just that their 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 romance feels forced. I don't know. Well, I think that's what he meant, but the way it's worded, it it, seems like it feels weird. It does it, feel it a little weird. It sounds a little rapey. It yeah. does feel yeah. a little rapey, which you know, in moments, this fi- this film is. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's very dirty. Yeah. All right, Nathan, what do you got? Uh, well, my next one comes from Robert W. I can only assume that's Robert Wu, the uh, the star of Arliss. Oh, and, uh, Arliss. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you were gonna say murderer Robert Wagner. No. No. Okay. No. Natalie Wood. Um, sorry, I don't know where that came from. Uh, decent pirate film with plenty of corny humor. If you like pirate films, this is a must see. Moreover, this is definitely Bruce Campbell material. But where is he? Oh yes, must have been working on that TV gem, Jack of All Trades. Three out of stars. Excellent. So is he taking shots at Jack of All Trades on this thing? Because that move, that that television show, uh, for a syndicated TV show from the '90s, that that show's solid. It's fun. I've never heard of it. Oh my god, it's like it's like Briscoe County Jr., but instead of being in the old west, it's more like in revolutionary times. All right. Yeah. Um. All right. Well. Um. Professor P um, gives it Professor uh, Plum, <laughs> yeah, in the, with, with the candlestick in the library. Um, right, of course, gives it um, gives it five out of stars. And get ready because this is like the good professor could only do. This is quite an eloquent um, review. Um, okay. He says, um, "My all time favorite pirate movie: an exciting story of treasure hunting and beating the mean guys with an awesome ship battle to top it off." <laughs> I'll say this: the cannon fight was kind of fun to watch. Yeah. Take that, mean guys! <laughs> mean guys, <laughs> they really beat the mean guys in this movie. So, um, you know, I mean, I when I sometimes say, I sometimes go in the other room and say, I'm going to go beat the mean guys, but I'm talking about go something beat different. The mean guy. I'm going to go beat that mean guy, but you pound know, that mean guy, pound I'll the mean know. guy. Going to go pound <laughs> the mean guy, lift a heavy mean guy. <laughs> All right, my last one, guys, is from the Hacker Group Anonymous. And uh, they they write um, uh, two and a half stars, by the way, two and a half out of stars. I enjoyed it back when it first came to video, though I felt that something wasn't right in it. The frisking scene was kind of arousing, but the rest of the film, meh. 
Yeah. So not even like a, like a kiss, like just a frisking scene. My last one actually comes from Emily B, and I can only assume that's Emily Blunt. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and she writes, a blast from my past, and I still like it. I have to admit the overall acting and editing isn't the best, but I'm just a sucker for a movie with a strong female lead. Plus, I love the idea of sailing to an island in search of treasure. It just sounds like a cool adventure and makes me want to go do something adventurous. Three out of stars. I could totally see Emily, Bl- Emily Blunt writing that, too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Galen, send us to the bank. All right, this is a longer review, so I'll only read a... I'll only read a, a portion of it from uh, from Stuart E., who gives it two out of stars, and um, it, um, says, by far the best actress in this movie is Shane of the Monkey, who plays <laughs> King Charles, <laughs> <laughs> Captain Pet Monkey. She is quite convincing as a pet monkey, although how she gets a from male one place pet to monkey another. At that. Yeah, I, exactly. Uh, she is quite convincing as a pet monkey, although how she gets from one place to another during the nonstop co- incoherent action is unclear. Oh, we actually they they showed she had he had like little hidey holes right. uh, around her quarters. Yeah, mm, yeah, it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the other actors are far less convincing in their roles, such as they are. If you like lots of explosions that are entirely wrong for the period and inconsistent, and only do real damage when the plot demands it, you might like this movie. <laughs> All right, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and and then and then continues to give further shade um, to uh, further deliberate shade to uh, Gina Davis. You know, uh-huh. yeah. But well, all after already saying that she's worse than the monkey. <laughs> well, there we go. We've 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 done it. We've gone through the reviews. We've done our due diligence. Now we're going to ask the question. Because we all like to watch uh, good stuff too. Although, to be fair, I did kind of like this movie. <laughs> to be but, fair, um, to be fair, <laughs> but we do have to ask, and I'll ask you first, Galen. Uh, if there's mm. something in particular you want to recommend, and what you what you watching, bud? What you watching, bud? I don't know what you watching, bud. I'll tell you so. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, that's me. Um, yeah, <laughs> best theme ever. Yeah. Of all of them, I think you really, you really raised the bar there. Yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. Say things Nathan. we can't take back here. <laughs> I mean, Darkwing Duck's pretty awesome. There you go. Um, yeah, no, I, I like Hill Street Blues theme too. Um, anyway, um, is that your recommendation? The theme song for Hill Street Blues? Yep, that's it. Okay, uh, okay. see it. Um, no, no, let's see. I've, yeah, I've been watching watching a lot of random shit lately. I've uh, yeah, it's like a lot. Um seems to be like a lot of um a lot of true crime um uh you know, related things um i'm i think uh, the other night i watched the on hulu the um uh, the documentary bad pharma which is um uh, a profile of um famous piece of shit martin shkreli and it's a yeah, yeah, for ha- for a film that makes- released the Wu Tang album, yeah, exactly. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, for Sorry. you know, for a film that's like makes you like for ninety minutes look at the the sneering wart of a face that is that it is possessed by Martin Shkreli. So punchable. Oh so my punchable. god, it's, he's the fucking worst. It's a really it's, but it is it is really interesting as far as like you know kind of makes, um, and so it it asks the question of. Like what kind of society, you know, do uh, what? What kind of society are we in that allows someone like, uh, like a Martin Shkreli to come into power and to and um, and um, and that's yeah, that's really kind of the thesis of the whole thing. And um, it becomes you know, there's there becomes like a little. He becomes kind of like the Moby Dick. They're trying to get you know, get an interview with him, and you know, and and it's. Um, you know, th- throughout uh, like an official interview, and that's, um, but uh, but then they, um, but then they, t- uh, but then they talk to you know other, you know colleagues of him of his. They they talk to uh, they they talked they talk to women he's like dated and is currently dating, which is just yeah, which is very disturbing. I mean, it's just like you know a whole just you know, long series of Stockholm syndrome. I mean, I, I can only imagine, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's fascinating to, you know, just, you know, because, you know, he's much less a human and more just like a thing that's happened to us. So it's definitely, it's worth, it's worth, it's worth a watch. All right. 
All right. And Nathan, what about you, pal? Well, uh, I actually just started watching this week the uh, Josh Brolin um, crime series Outer Range. Uh, unfortunately, he does very little skateboarding in it. What? Mm. Right. But still, there's some really cool sci fi stuff uh, where they're kind of, you know, tampering with, uh, you know, space and time. Hmm. It, you you watch it and you think it's going to almost be like a, a Yellowstone type clone of a of a show. Uh, but they're but then they start leaning in more heavily towards like, uh, you know, time and space and and time travel uh, and the like. So so it's a little uh, it's a little genre mashup. Is what we got here. It is. It's a bit of a genre mashup. Uh, but I, I've watched. I watched the first episode this week, um, as the recording. But I mean, they're releasing new episodes every week. So by the time this thing comes out, you might even be able to binge the whole thing, depending on when you're li- when you're listening to it. Uh, but it's been uh, it's been some good drama, and uh, I've been I I appreciate that. That's yeah, what definitely. I appreciate about it. All yeah, right. It looks like it looks like a fun one. And, and what, what have you, I been Brandon? watching, bud? Yeah, what, what Brandon, have you been watching, bud? Hell, well, tell us. weigh in on this dance sensation that's sweeping the nation, guys. I don't want to make our guest a little a little bashful, a little, little, oh. little shy. Oh. But I watched it. I watched a little movie called Moon Manor. Ah, I've heard of that one. Which uh, our our good friend here, Galen Howard, happens to be in. I, I was actually going to say, movie. would you recommend yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i yeah no i i totally no, i mean galen would you recommend oh, okay. <laughs> I, yeah i i i'm i'm I, I definitely stand by that film it's a it, it's it, it's a um i'm very proud of that movie okay uh galen Explain, brendan galen and uh richard uh now i'm gonna say his name right relay yes relay richard relay um of course you may know him as the uh jump to conclusions character from office space and oh, many cool. many many others <laughs> oh so um, many yeah you guys make a great comedic uh, duo. Um, also, the lead actor. Now, refresh me. What is his name? I don't want to leave him out. Oh, the 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 the, the lead actor. Yeah, it's his uh, it's his first film. A guy named uh, Jimmy Carrazzo. Um, Jimmy Carrazzo. Yeah. And so he, it's basically that, about yeah. a yeah. So it's basically about a guy. It feels weird telling you what this movie is, but it's tell me more. Tell guy. me about this movie I've been in. Uh, Jimmy Carrazzo plays a man who I believe. Uh, now, what I read his. The, his his stories that he tells about his life are uh, pretty closely related to his real life. And yes. they, they pulled a lot of uh, his real life into it. But basically, he's a guy. He has uh, yeah, he has Alzheimer's. He you know his memory's starting to go. He's um, and he decides to um, end his own life uh, on his terms. So right. um, he has a whole and he has a a, a funeral as it were. Um, so the whole, the whole movie is basically planned around this day where he's planning to end his own life on his own terms. Um, uh, I will say that everyone is great in this movie, including, uh, our guest here, oh, sure. um, uh, Jimmy Carrazzo for uh, like a, fr- especially like his first lead role. It's insane. He's, he's great. Yeah. Um, it was his first lead role at like 80 years old. It was incredible. Yeah. And I will say that, uh, Deborah Wilson is just fucking crackling in this movie, like energetic. He's so much fun. Yeah. She's so fun as his like death doula. I don't want to give it a giveaway too much, but uh, it's, it's very, it's very funny. It's very sad. It's just somber. It's got, it's got everything, including a couple of, a uh, couple of cameos. I won't spoil. There are some um, fun cam. There's some really fun cameos in there. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, so yeah, for a movie about it's for a movie about death. It's very fun. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and it's and you know it, it's also got some you know some messaging about you know you, you know mortality and and some LGBTQ stuff in there. Um, it's got everything. It's Very it's cool. wonderful. Moon Manor. Two thumbs up. Good job, Galen. Ah, thanks, guys. Yeah. Paboom. So, Galen, is there anything uh, that you want to plug? Uh let's see. Um, well, it'll be um be a while before it um before it airs but um the i i filmed an episode of the uh apple plus uh show physical with rose Byrne, and uh that series starts in june and i think my uh my episode will air um around uh, around mid-august so uh look forward to that oh yeah yeah, yeah baby Nathan, uh, is your old buddy around to say a few few parting words? He is. I'm sure he is. Just one moment. I'll grab him. Okay. Yeah. Hello! It's a good friend Montrose Merkington the third here. 
the real Montrose Merkington the third here, I might add. Uh, and I do invite you to my YouTube channel, Montrose Merkington TV, uh, where you will see me, the real me, the real Montrose Merkington the third, uh, discussing uh, the graps and other various things. Uh, and also, uh, if you wish to be friends with me on Facebook, uh, do find me uh, in my Facebook group, uh, Montrose Milkington the Third Esquire and Friends, and finally, of course, you could always tweet at me uh, on your Twitter devices at Montrose the Third. That's the number three R D. Thank you. More later. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. We did it, guys. We got to the end. Kaboom. Nobody knows. No peek behind the curtain, but the, <laughs> there were some there were some issues. But we powered through. We got to we got through this. Yes, I, we're yeah. Spoiler we're, alert. We're heading into like yeah. We're yeah. heading into like uh, killer clowns from outer space territory. Yeah. yeah. Spoiler alert. I don't think uh, Zencaster will ever be a sponsor of the show. Oh, I, oh. I, I think. Well, I'm just gonna say this, Galen. I think you. Uh, I think you have some sort of uh, deterrent to Zencaster. This is the first time it's done this to me, so you must be running some kind of like spyware in the background. You broke it. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, and I don't mean like the classic spyware. I just mean like you're a spy and you have some kind of hardware. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I have. Well, well yeah. I, I. I have a spy costume, and that's my spyware. Oh, oh my god it's been a long night guys yep. um Yar. so so Yar. galen galen thank you once again for joining us of course of course and uh and nathan just to just to finish this off with a bang do you have any questions about cutthroat island well Tell i us. guess i guess i kind of do yeah um yar. yar yar i i mean with a movie where you've got gina davis and Matthew Modine. Yar. In the pirate movie. Yar. Uh, you got Freddie Harlan directing. Yar. Great. And 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 Franklin Jella and, and Mari Chaken in the movie. Yar. And and I and and in the movie where there's all kinds of like swashbuckling adventures and, and sword fights and torture. With a movie with all of that going on in it. How how does it not receive an R rating? And that's the third time I've used that joke in this episode. What was I thinking? Yar, yar, yar.